Welcome. Today we're going to be taking apart an Asus 2-in-1 Q504U. This is a convertible touchscreen laptop slash tablet. And to start we're going to need a small uh, Torx bit. This is a Torx T5. And then once we get inside we're going to be using a small Phillips bit. So of course the first thing we're going to do is flip it over and then we're going to remove these bottom case screws. All right, once you most have most of those screws out, we're going to uh, switch to our Phillips bit and then get the two hidden Phillips screws underneath these back feet. So you'll need a small flat object to peel the feet up. And you can remove the screws. All right, now that we have those two Phillips screws out, we're going to find the seam between the palm rest and the bottom case and put a flat object in between and start separating the case from the palm rest. So once you have it started, just keep pulling up and work your way around and then you'll be able to remove the case and access the inside of the laptop. Interesting, we have what looks to be uh, something burned on the inside of this one and I can see it right here. It looks like a little chip has fried. So I would definitely check and see if you're, if you have any burnt spots inside your laptop. I'm not sure what could have caused that. Um, but yeah, this is definitely a bad motherboard because it is partially uh, melted. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is remove the battery. So we have a, just a straight pop-up connection here. So all we're gonna do is remove those battery screws and then we can lift it out of the case. not entirely sure what it could have caused that. I don't see any spill damage or anything. And this is the bottom of the motherboard. Um, maybe we'll see more once we flip it over, but it's unusual to see just one part of the motherboard fried like that without some other kind of uh, extenuating circumstance. All right, so we have the battery loose and we're just gonna go ahead and pull it towards the connector and then looks like we'll have to hold down the motherboard and then just push up with your finger and it'll pop that connector straight off and then that will allow you to remove the battery. All right, so for hard drive upgrades, um, your hard drive caddy is right here. So we're gonna remove the screws and first we'll go ahead and pop that connector off for the SATA connector. And then, of course, remove the screws. And then once you have those mounting screws removed, you can remove the hard drive caddy. And there's one, two, three, four screws here on top to uh, separate the hard drive from the caddy and then the SATA connector just slides straight out. All right, so your RAM is gonna be underneath this cover and it looks like they've pretty well taped it. So we're gonna peel up on the tape and just release it from the motherboard by pulling it straight up. So once you pop that cover up and off, 
Then we can spread the little bars and remove the ram stick. All right, next up we're going to go ahead and remove the USB card reader audio board. And to do that, we're just gonna kind of get these Wi-Fi antennas out of the way. Flip up on that connector. Um, this type of connector, uh, you just flip up on that little retainer and then pull the ribbon out and you can flip it back down. Of course we have the obligatory tape that we'll have to remove. Uh, it was probably best to remove the tape from the ribbon in this case instead of trying to pull it off of the keyboard because what usually happens with the strong type tape is you're going to rip that backing off of the uh, keyboard. So we'll just go ahead and remove it from the ribbon and then just have the one speaker connection right here. Just get your fingernails on it and just pull it straight out. And it looks like the in-out board is also partially retained by the hinge here. So we'll go ahead and remove those hinge screws along with this other screw that's holding on the in-out board. And then we can remove the in-out board. how you remove it. So the speakers we're going to go ahead and just uh, leave with the palm rest but as you see there's only one screw holding it on and then just the little uh, speaker cable that's going through the little notches there. Alright so we'll go ahead and remove this Wi-Fi card. Just one screw. And then I probably need to use a little bit of finagling to get this out. So you want to lift up on the top part here where the screw was as you're pushing it out. Um, the reason being is it's it looks to want to catch on these tiny little transistors down here. So um, just lift up a little bit on the top side as you're pulling it out. That'll keep you from breaking anything. All right, it appears the fan and heat sink are in assembly. Uh, so we'll go ahead and remove the fan and heat sink now. So we're gonna wanna just disconnect this by pulling straight up. And then we can feed those cables out of the little retainers around the fan. And the one fan connection will just pop straight out. Just grab the little tabs with your fingernails and just push it out. And we can also remove these screws. If you are going to be reinstalling the heatsink with new thermal paste, make sure to tighten these screws in a Z pattern. Um, that way it'll tighten evenly down on the new thermal paste and there are stamp numbers on the heatsink indicating the order that you should tighten them. But as far as removal, it does not matter. All right, so it looks like the thermal paste is a little bit hard. Um, so we're gonna have to wiggle the heat sink a little bit to remove it from the CPU. There we go. So once the thermal paste starts to age a little bit, it turns into a pretty strong adhesive. So definitely wanna wiggle it off instead of just trying to pop it off in one shot um, and keep you from breaking anything. Alright, looks like we're pretty close to removing the motherboard. So the only thing we got to do now is disconnect uh, the rest of the cables that are attached to the motherboard. So we got our display cable here and just 
pop it up and feed it out. We have a small one for the keyboard backlight, same type of connector that you just flip up on and then you can pull that connector out. Same for the keyboard and the touchpad. Just flip up that little arm and then remove the ribbon. Uh, pram battery can stay put. So it looks like we have all of the cables disconnected. Now we can finish uh, by removing the other screws on the motherboard and the hinge screws. And also after we've uh, remove these hinge screws, we'll be able to also separate the display from the palm rest. So once you've got the screws out, you might need to wiggle a little bit to get started. Um, but then just lift that uh, hinge up and then should be able to remove that motherboard. I'll slowly flip it over, make sure that there's no more ribbons connected. Okay, I do see now why the motherboard fried. There is a little bit of uh, evidence of a spill here. So that's kind of what happens. You're going to spill something on your keyboard. Uh, the liquid's going to run down on top of the motherboard and it's going to short some of these connections. In this case it was a really bad short because it did fry a chip so this person definitely smelled something burning after they spilled liquid on their laptop. So it's definitely a good idea not to do that. Alright now we're going to finish uh, getting the display assembly ready to remove from the palm rest. So we'll just make sure that those cords are free and then we'll go ahead and swivel these hinges up a little bit more just like that and once you have those hinges swiveled up then you can just tilt the palm rest up and remove it. It's definitely spilled somewhere around here. I don't feel any sticky keys so the keyboard might be okay, but the keyboard, um, now the keyboard is riveted into the palm rest so it's not serviceable. So if you do need a new keyboard, you're gonna have to buy the palm rest assembly with it. The touchpad is just a few screws here at the top to remove it, so it's definitely replaceable. And of course, speakers are just one screw and the Wi-Fi antennas are just held on by adhesives, so if you need to replace those, they're right up here on top. So that is it for the palm rest assembly. All right, so we're left with a complete display assembly. Um, with most touchscreens, they are gonna be pretty much non-serviceable by the average person. Uh, the digitizer and the LCD are usually held on together uh, with really strong adhesive, so it's almost impossible to keep to separate them without breaking them. If you do need a, if you have a cracked screen and you need to buy a new one, definitely get a complete assembly because um, you're going to save yourself a lot of time and a lot of headache and keep from breaking uh, other parts in your display. They do sell uh, digitizer screen assemblies together and you would just separate the back cover from the rest of the assembly. But for this one, we're gonna go ahead and leave it complete. But definitely uh, consider if you do need a new screen, just buying a whole uh, assembly together. It'll make your life a lot easier. So that's how you disassemble a Asus 2-in-1 Q504U. If this video helped you at all, or you found it informative, please like and subscribe. Thank you.